everybody. This is the M2A4 Slammer UP and this is a YouTube video tutorial on what this tank is all about and how to operate it and how to drive it and how to use it effectively. So let's start with a general uh, look around. The tank does not normally come with this camouflage on it. I added that. The bags on the back that the camouflage netting is optional, which I think looks really cool. Um, this is the UP version. The UP stands for uh, Urban Urban Program or something like that. Uh, it doesn't mean up. It's because this version of the tank, there are two versions of this tank. The regular and, and the regular slammer does not have the gun mounted on top there, which is a, what we call an RCWS, or Remote Controlled Weapon System. Uh, that is, for all practical purposes, a 50 caliber machine gun, and it's operated by the gun commander, or the tank commander, rather. Um, this tank first appeared in late 70s, 1979 to be exact. It's an Israeli tank uh, called the Merkava, which is Hebrew for chariot. And this tank saw uh, action in the 1980s during the Israeli invasion of Lebanon. It played a key role in that invasion. So it's been around for a long time. Uh, it's a 40-year-old design, but still a very sound tank. The gun is 120 millimeter smooth bore that shoots three time, three types of ammunition. Uh, the AP, uh, APFS uh, armor piercing, uh, fin stabilized, discarding sabo round, which is a mouthful. But that is the primary anti-tank weapon. It's, it's one of those uh, rounds that's got a double. Um, it has a, an explosive charge and uh, it has an armor-piercing shell that travels at great velocity and is made of very dense material that can penetrate armor. It has 24 of those rounds. It also has 12 each. It has 12 regular high explosive rounds that you would use against soft targets, like infantry and buildings, uh, light and light vehicles like truck, trucks, etc. Um, and it has, it also has 12 um, high explosive uh, armor piercing rounds, which are sort of a, I think, an in-between, um, sort of a compromise. And, and, and I take that as meaning the way I take that is if I knew I were going up against uh, other main battle tanks, I would certainly be using the APFS, whatever rounds, the armor piercing, the main rounds, the one that there's 24 of. If I were going up against infantry only, I would probably use the regular HE rounds. And if I wasn't sure what I was going up against, I might choose the high explosive anti tank rounds which kind of is a compromise between the two. So, uh, because the APFSD rounds are not going to be effective against infantry, they're, too, they're not really designed for that. So, in addition to the 50 caliber machine gun on top that is controlled by the tank commander, there's also a 7.62 millimeter uh, machine gun on the turret uh, that's controlled by the gunner. So the gunner can choose either the 120 millimeter cannon or the 7.62 machine gun. There is another version of this tank, the non-UP. Oh, UP is Urban Program. That's what it's called. For. So the other version, the Plain Jane version, is not a UP tank. And the the, the major differences are that the non-UP version does not have the RCWS machine gun on top and it also it doesn't have quite as much armor as the UP version 
This UP version has increased armor on the back of the tank because it's designed to operate in close quarters in an urban environment where it could be hit from behind and just not have the room to maneuver, uh, you know, and always face front that a regular tank would have in an open field. One more comment that that RCWS machine gun uh, on top of the tank turret is the most vulnerable thing on this tank. That thing can be knocked out pretty easily uh, with 40 millimeter uh, with a 40 millimeter uh, hand grenade gun, or or even a, you know even a heavy caliber 50 caliber or 20 millimeter cannon would also knock that thing out pretty quickly. But it is very handy to have for the tank commander. Because that way the gunner can be uh, processing one, uh, you know, the gunner can be going after one enemy while the uh, tank commander can be prosecuting another target, infantry especially. Okay, so uh, the other comment I would say in general about this tank, having driven it for quite a bit, is that it's underpowered. It's a pretty heavy tank not very fast. Usually you'd be lucky to do 30, 35 kilometers per hour. It will go faster than that. If you hold down the shift key, I've gotten it up to about 54 kilometers per hour on the flat, but it's not really designed for that. And, it, uh, and, it's, and you really discover that when you're going up steep hills. If you're climbing up the side of a mountain with this thing, you can be going one kilometer per hour. I mean, it just it's just all it can take to pull itself up, and in those circumstances, I would recommend that you you use a switchback method where you basically go up the side of the hill on diagonals. You'll make better progress. All right. Well, let's take a let's let's start by uh, talking about a couple more issues. This this tank has a crew of three, um, and that's pretty standard for all the heavy armor. In armor three, and then even in a lot of the APCs, you'll have a commander, a gunner, and a driver. Uh, you can do everything you need to do as the tank commander. Um, you can run this tank by yourself. If you have an AI driver and an AI gunner, you'll be fine. It's it's it'll be it'll work fine. Um, you can also switch roles. So uh, there are times maybe when you want to switch to the gunner position to, uh, you know, to hit a target that somehow your gunner can't quite get on. Um, sometimes tough shots, you know, where you're peeking through foliage, you can only see part of the target. Uh, you might want to line that up yourself, but most of the time you can target enemy vehicles uh, and, and have the gunner fire, but there's a few techniques you have to learn. Um, I don't really see the need to ever have a human driver. I mean, I think if you had three people, um, you know, if you had a couple of friends and you wanted to drive a tank like this and have one of them be the driver, that would be terrific. But most people aren't going to be happy being a driver. And, uh, and, it, and a driver is a very important job, but uh, because I think if you had a human driver, they can do things that an AI driver cannot do. They can anticipate problems. They can bank the back the tank. You know, once the tank gets hit by a missile, say, you know, the driver probably wouldn't even wait for orders and would back the tank up behind a building or under cover. So there are times when that would be advantageous. But, uh, yeah. but you know, in normal use, the AI driver is pretty nice. They do a reasonably good job. And what I love about them is you could just give them a waypoint halfway across the island on a road, and they'll get you there, and uh, you know saves you a lot of trouble. And if you need to do WASD, you know, forward, back, right, left, you can give those commands anytime, either as the tank commander or tank gunner, and the driver will execute them anyway. So you know if you ever get wedged in between a couple buildings and you need to back out or or you want to take charge and start on the tank yourself, you can do that. Uh, one other feature that I really like about this tank is if you look in the back there, there's a door, and this tank will carry six troops. So it is in effect 
almost a super APC. Uh, it will not carry a full squad, but you can carry six in there. And I really like that because, uh, you know, one thing, you know, if you spend any time driving armored vehicles, one of the most frustrating things about them nowadays is that uh, all it takes is one infantryman with a rocket launcher to blow you up. So here you are in this multi-million dollar huge piece of heavy armored steel and some guy with a rocket launcher and a grudge, you know, can take you out very quickly. And the only way to protect, and you know, you don't have very good situational awareness inside this tank or any tank for that matter. So, so you know, you're really vulnerable to that. You know, they can, I mean, I think we've all seen that where you, you can crawl up right behind a tank and place explosive charges right underneath it and walk away and blow it up. And, you know, that's how bad the situational awareness is when you're in a tank. So the, the beauty of having that infantry on board is that when you get into a situation where you are near uh, an enemy soldier, especially enemy infantry, um, I would highly recommend that you uh, disembark that infantry and they will follow the tank, they'll move around you and they will protect your flanks and make sure that if there's any infantry you're going to know about it. That is a huge, huge plus. Another thing I recommend is that in that group of infantry you carry either an engineer or a, or a repair specialist because uh, you know if you have systems to get knocked out entirely like they're red like they blow a tread completely or your turret is completely disabled a repair specialist or an engineer can, you can you can have them disembark and then I get out too and I direct them to repair the vehicle and they will get you back to 50% which means that all systems will be orange instead of red and you can still either continue fighting or at a minimum make it back home okay so uh, anyway that's the, the basic tank let's go inside and have a look around we're going to start in the, uh, in the commander seat and this is what the commander seat looks like look around here you have your you can see your damage over here on this computer graphic on the left it tells you, uh, if you if you really spend time looking at this there's HMG that's your, the commander's heavy machine gun um, your azimuth all sorts of things shows the tanks damage damage to the engine the fuel tanks etc main armament APF SDS armor piercing Fin stabilized, fin stabilized, uh, disposing sabo. He dash T is the high explosive rounds. I guess the T stands for tank. I don't know. And then the uh, high explosive anti tank. I think MP is multi purpose T round. You have 12 of those. That's the one I recommend if you're not sure what you're going to come up against. Um, I usually I usually have the APFS DS uh, selected until I see what my threat is and then if I need to downgrade I do that because of course your your worst enemy is another main battle tank okay there's your uh, oh there's your radio box that's important we all need to know how to operate that um, and uh, there's that's got to be our night vision and thermal imaging Oh, this is impressive stuff. You know, I've never really looked very hard at all this kind of... But look, look at this. You know, you're in this box. You can't see a darn thing, really. I mean, I, I can't imagine how they did this in World War II without all the modern, uh, you know, imaging. But that's that's all they had. You know, once you were buttoned up, you didn't have much to see. So this monitor in the front is... Uh, it shows you what your RCWS system and camera sees and that's the that's what you're going to use most of the time so I'm going to get out of the double alt mode here and now you can see that um, what you do is click the right mouse button and that takes you 
to the uh, to the camera view. And as the tank commander, you will be using this view frequently, right? This is this is does two things. Number one, uh, it allows you to to use your machine gun. You, you use the left mouse button to pull the trigger to use your 50 cal. You have 200 rounds plus three extra belts. So what's that? A total of uh, 800 rounds. 50 caliber ammunition, which uh, does quite a number on infantry and has quite a long range. If you zoom in, I'm going to pick a window here up in the control tower and you hit the T key. You have to hit the T because that's when you're telling the ballistics computer the range to the target. So let's try, let's try that out. It appears that I'm a little low. That's weird. It's not. Uh, there we go. 760 rounds. I guess it didn't do it because I was pointing at glass. So now I can take out all the glass on X. It's, it's quite accurate. So when you when you pick a target and uh, make sure you hit that T key for target, it'll it'll give the range data automatically and adjust the aim point of your machine gun. Okay. Uh, the other thing that this, uh, uh, of course, this is like all of these vehicles, and you've probably seen this before. You have night vision, which in the daytime is a white screen. You have thermal imaging, of course. Now you might ask, well, why is it that these, these tanks parked out here on the runway don't show up on, on my thermal imaging? And the reason is that they're parked. So they're not really producing much heat. Um, you have two versions of thermal imaging. Um, you know, one is a hot object show black, and the other one is they show white. So, uh, but they don't show up much right now because they're not producing much heat. They're just sitting there. But I'll tell you, if you're in a main, in a battle situation where they're moving, well, you can see them miles away. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. Let's get back in. Now, that's interesting, and I'll explain later. I'll explain why that happened. I hit the V key by mistake. Uh, and as soon as I got out of the tank, the gunner fired a shot. And the reason the gunner did that was normally in a tank in a vehicle the the commander gives the orders to fire the, the commander gives all the commands the gunner does not fire independently so to fire on a target you have to tell the gunner to target a specific uh, tank or truck or whatever you're trying to shoot and then you also have to give him the command to fire he will not do that on his own even if you even if you you know, tell them to fire at will, it won't make any difference. But as soon as I'm out of the tank, because I'm the gun commander, or the tank commander, the gunner becomes the commander and fires at will when he wants to. And that's exactly what happened. All right, and that's important to know, because if you think that the gunner is going to shoot tanks while you're machine gunning infantry with your 50 caliber, it's not going to happen. All right. So, um... Just a brief description of this screen. You have, uh, of course, your azimuth up in the top there. Right now, we're coming up to north, right? I put it right over N, and we're just about at zero, zero, zero. Bingo. Okay. And so that's if if your if your gunner is a human, you're going to have to give them those coordinates because they won't know. So you're going to have to point at an enemy tank and say. You know, in this case, I would say, you know, I would hit the T key, um, and I would tell my gunner, uh, I have a tank bearing 024 at 250 meters, and they, they, that's how they would go to find it. Um, when you have a AI gunner, all you have to do is hit the T key, 
and they get right on it. See, let's see, that's another one here on the end. Let's let's try this guy out there. Target that tank. Okay, and you can tell when he targets it because there's a little. See that little white crosshair on the tank? That's how you know he's targeted it. You'll see that move over. That's where the gun's pointing. So if I tell him to target this tank, target that tank. Notice that's where his gun goes, and it gives him a range. Now, you might be wondering why we're sitting here with all these enemy tanks and they're not shooting at us, and there's a very good explanation for that. And the reason is that before I started, when I designed this scenario, I made sure that I took their fuel and their ammo away. You can do that in the editor. So these poor sons of guns are sitting in that tank. There's live crews in these tanks, but they can't drive away and they can't shoot at me. They're just here for demo purposes, and I kind of feel sorry for them, but uh, too bad. All right, so let me pick one. Let's let's try our machine gun on this guy here. Enemy uh, spotted. Tank, 700 meters. Bearing I, I put my crosshairs on him, hit the T key. Tank, 200 meters, 12 o'clock. Now, uh, you know, he's targeting the tank, but if I push the left mouse button, that's only going to fire my machine gun. And he's going to swing his gun around, but he can't do anything because he has no ammo. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, the upper left there, you know, you have the usual indications for damage. Uh, upper right now, you'll notice the upper right. It says RCWS, heavy machine gun, 12.7 millimeter, uh, tracer rounds. I have 61 rounds left in this belt of 200. Um, I have a smoke screen too. What are they talking about there? Well, as the tank commander, if you get in a pickle and you need to defend yourself, you can use the C key, uh, just like an airplane does, to fire counter C for countermeasures. Let's I hope this works. There we go, and it fires a smoke screen all around, at least all around the front, wherever you're pointed, to allow you to make a quick getaway if necessary. Okay, and you can do that twice. So if you look up there in the upper right now, you'll see smoke screen says one. I only have one left. Okay, now. Um, and then finally, underneath that, it says Canon 120 millimeters. What are they talking about there? Well, what they're talking about there is that that's, that's the weapon your gunner has selected. Okay. Now, to change that, uh, you can push, you have to push Control F. F won't do it. You have to push Control F. MG. And that gets the gunner to switch between his coax. 7.62, which I guess is approximately a 308 uh, machine gun, and cannon. his cannon. Okay. MG. Cannon. And to change the types of ammo they're using, you scroll your mouse wheel, and you can see up there in the upper left, I can have the gunner reload with uh, HET or uh, high explosive anti tank multi purpose. Okay. Or, of course, the APFSDS. So, I hope you're following all this. Now, that's that's pretty much it for the commander. Uh, as the commander, I can also give the driver commanders. I'm using WASD. So, if I hit the A, I'm telling the, the driver to turn left. Right, right left, left, go forward, stop back, you know, stop. stop, just like any other vehicle. So that's what I mean by, uh, that's why I always use an AI driver, because I can always give commands when I want to. And when I don't want to, I let them do all the, I, let, I leave the driving to them. All right, now let's go back inside. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to show you how all this works here shortly. Uh, so we're going to go back inside now. And I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel down to go to the gunner's seat. All right, so this is the gunner's. This is the gunner's cubicle. You know, he's got all the neat little switches and everything, but it's essentially the same information. And it, this is really cool, but you're never going to look at this when you're in a battle anyway. Uh, 
uh, because you're going to hit the right mouse button and you're going to be looking at this exterior view again. Now as a gunner, you're the gunner, so you don't have to wait for the commanding officer's, uh, the tank commander's orders. Um, and so you can zoom in. You also have night vision and thermal imaging, etc. Okay? And uh, you can hit T. And there you get, the, it tells you the range and the ready. And you don't, and, and you can fire the gun. And we'll talk about that in a minute difference between being the commander and being the gunner and how you fire that gun and how you change your ammo. Now, remember the, the tank commander had to hit control F to change the ammo, but for the gunner, all you need to hit is F. Okay, So I can cycle between the 120 millimeter cannon and my machine gun just by hitting the F key. Now, once I'm on the 120 millimeter cannon, just like the tank commander, if I want to change my type of ammo, I would have to go up here and reload 120 millimeter HE, and it's doing it right now. It does it very quickly, and boom! See, it only takes a few seconds. So I'm now ready to shoot high explosives, and I'm going to demonstrate. So I'm going to hit T, and this target, this tank is 249 meters away, and it says RDY ready. And I also know that because when you look up there on the right, you'll see every the the, the information is all in white. Um, and you'll watch when I fire this round, you'll see it'll turn red and then orange. It takes a couple a few seconds for the to reload that gun. So after a while, you'll get that rhythm. But you you know you you have to understand that you can't fire this thing. You know, three times a second, it doesn't work that way. You have to, you know, the, the automatic reloader has to cycle the shells. Here we go. I'm going to fire one HE round at this tank. And that HE round probably did little or no damage. See, it knocked some of the, some of the, you know, flashing off the side. But it, 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 uh, it's not unlikely that it did much damage because it's strictly a high explosive round and it's not going to pierce any armor do any serious damage okay so uh, but that's how that works so let's go back to the uh, APF FSDS armor piercing shells see how it turns red up there it's reloading and now back it's white ready to go okay and uh, before we get to shooting let's go just just because we don't want to ignore our driver Let's go to the, uh, I'm going to go uh, select the driver's seat, and there you have it, very exciting, and he has indications on speed, RPM, <coughs> um, and he does not have, well, his only external view is he can look out the front window up close, so that's about it, you know, he doesn't get to. You will find when you're playing this game and driving this tank that you do a lot of this. You know, because this is, you hold down the Alt key, you can rotate around, you can see everything around your tank, you can see obstacles coming, and uh, yes, it is cheating. But you're going to do it anyway, because why not? You can, right? If you want to be a purist, then by all means, stay inside your tank and try and, try and see where you're going. I wish you luck. All right, so all right, so that's done. Now we're, I'm going to go back to the commander's seat, and we're going to talk about. Uh, well, let's go back to the gunner's seat because uh, I'm going to hit the right mouse button. We're going to go back to the gunner's view. Now we're going to shoot one of these tanks with the real deal. So there's a tank at the end of the runway. Um, if you don't know this, the worst angle to shoot a tank at is right here in the front because the armor is the strongest. You see those squares on the front of the tank? Those are explosive charges designed to counteract your armor piercing shell. Um, and and the, see the slope on the turret? Uh, literally, your, your uh, shells will bounce off that. It's that 
the armor's that heavy and they put that slope on there um, in hopes that some of it will bounce off and it will so if you're going to shoot the front of a tank really the best place to hit it is on the flat right here possibly even on the treads depends what you're trying to do you know if you if you hit them on the tread you can you can mess them up pretty good they, that means they can still shoot but they might not be able to move effectively um, anyway so that's the worst place to shoot a tank the best place to shoot a tank if you can find one that gives you that option is uh, and I don't think we have one here is uh, is hit them from behind that's where they're the weakest and that's why the uh, UP version has uh, of the slammer has extra armor in the rear okay well let's pick this guy here at the end of the runway because he's probably the most vulnerable he's got uh, he's got his backside showing there where he's the most vulnerable so that's where I'm gonna but I can't control that this is one problem with being the tank commander I'm gonna hit T and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna I'm sorry I'm gonna hit control T am I the gunner I am the gunner that's why it's not doing it so I only need to hit T and I can aim wherever I want that's one advantage of shooting as the gunner so I'm gonna aim for his back end there Okay, we're using the armor piercing, and all I need to do is push the left mouse button. And here we go. Look at that. One shot, and the crew's already bailing out. That tells you there's some serious damage to that tank. And I bet if I make one more shot, it'll blow up. Watch this. There you go. Okay. Now, as far as the infantry is concerned, I'm going to... I'm going to hit the F key and switch to my coaxial machine gun. And I'm still dialed in at 911 meters, so I should be able to... I should be able to do a number on them. But I can't see anything because of the smoke. Anyway, mission accomplished, huh, on that one? Now, let's pick another tank, and we'll do that as the as the tank commander. So I'm going to switch views back to the commander's seat. And so this is a little different now. Uh, the commander now, I have to, first thing I have to do is put the gunner on the target. So I'm going to pick this tank right here and I'm going to hit the T key. That tank. 700 meters and, and I just one. told the gunner to target that tank. I have no control over where he's going to shoot the tank. I can just tell him to target it. And the only other thing you need to know, um, now notice that the gunner is still has the coaxial machine gun selected. So if I tell him to target that tank, I don't think anything's going to happen. At best, he'll use the machine gun. He will not change ammo. Cease fire. Fire. See, that's just telling him to cease fire and fire. So, so what I need to do is hit Control F. Remember the gunner just uses the F key, but if you're the commander, you need to hit Control F. Cannon. And now I just told him to change to his cannon, and he's done that. I could change his type of ammo, uh, but I know that he has. Uh, what does he have selected? Uh, I can tell by what the other options are that he's got the APFSDS selected. And we're going to stick with that. So Now, to tell him to fire, watch this. If I push my left mouse button as the commander, what do you think is going to happen? I'll tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to fire the machine gun. My machine gun. Here we go. To get the gunner to fire, you have to hold down the control key. Just as to change his ammo, you need to to change from the cannon to the machine gun and back to the cannon, you need to hold control F. To give him the order to fire, you need to hold control left mouse button. And here's what happens. Okay. Bravo. Now I'm waiting for him to reload, which he's already done. That was quick. It only takes a few seconds. 
It seems like an eternity when a cannon, when a, the other tank is shooting at you, though, I can tell you that. One more shot, boom, he's gone. So it, that only took three shots because we're shooting at his side. Okay, now we're going to take the head on guy, and you're going to see what I mean by how hard it is to kill a tank from from the front on. Not only are you staring right down his barrel, but you're staring at you're shooting at the hard the toughest part of the tank. And so I'm gonna go I'm gonna hit T. Now every time you change target you gotta hit T. Target that tank. Half a clear okay. twelve o'clock. That means he re, re, he aims his gun at that target and he has a range four hundred and eighty meters. And here we go, I'm holding down the control key. One Notice how, I mean, doesn't even, he doesn't even have a scratch on him. Two, you know, it can take four or five rounds like this to take the tank out. What are we up to now? Four, I think. Okay, so we finally, we've done some damage now. You know, that tank's pretty messed up. When the crew bails, that tank is pretty messed. I, you know, I think we fired like six shots already. I think the gunner is shooting at the, it's bouncing, they're bouncing off the turret. I'm going to go to the gunner's seat. Here's an example of where you might want to switch to the gunner's seat. So you can aim precisely. And I'm going to make sure I'm aiming. I'm going to hit the T key again, make sure I got the lay accurate. And I'm going to aim for that flat frontal surface. I'm going to aim for his treads. That probably didn't help him any. Finally. I mean, that, you know, that must have taken eight or nine rounds. So you get the idea how hard it is to do this from the front. And these are not the top line, uh, CSAT tanks we're shooting at. These are the the older ones. So that's pretty much it, I think. I can't think of too much else. Um, um, the only thing I would say is, if you carry infantry in the back, I would put I would make up a squad of six using the editor. Make sure one of them's an engineer or repair technician because that'll come in handy and. Also, I would designate all those six guys as a team, like a red team. That makes it very easy. You don't want your tank crew to hop out, so you can select your red team and tell them to disembark, and they'll hop out and protect your tank. And when you want them to get back in, you tell them red team to re-enter. So, I, you know, I, this was a bit of a long-winded uh, video, but I think we've covered most of the basics. Um, as far as fighting a tank, there's a lot more to it. Um, you know how to how to sh how to shoot at targets, hull down. You know with your with your you know where you might come up behind a hill and keep the majority of your hull below where it's protected, and just get your gun and your turret up far enough to see the enemy. And that makes you a very hard target. Believe me, the first guy, if you can maneuver around the enemy tank. Uh, if you have that opportunity to, before you fire the first shot, before they know you're there, to get either a side shot or even better, a rear shot, your chances are much better. Um, because as soon as you fire that first shot, he's going to swing that gun around, and he will start firing back at you. So you also want to make sure you have your front facing him. Because uh, it's essentially, it's a slugfest. It's a duel you know, at a few hundred meters, and whoever gets the most rounds out the fastest 
and against the most vulnerable part of the enemy tank is going to win. And then once you're limping around with a broken track and stuff, you're going to be glad you got that engineer or that repair tech on your crew. All right, that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped. And uh, have a great day.